Well, I've got to tell you, it's a fishing show. Now, you always think of big fish as an angler, don't you? But sometimes you don't always get big fish, do you? I mean, it's the way it is. Now, I love my beach fishing, fishing off the shore, rocks, anywhere but boulder strewn beaches. I'm lugging gear, camera equipment, heavy rods, heavy leads. Sometimes, you know, it's a great enjoyment just to go with a rod, maybe two light spinning rods, a knapsack, just get out there and travel and try and explore. And I got the invite to go fishing with a top, top fishing guy. Mike, my son, join me down in Dorset, he said, I'll take you on a shore mark. You won't believe it's wonderful down there. Scenery was fantastic. Fishing was okay, but boy, like a lot of you guys out there, did we have to struggle for them. Well, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm down on the south coast. It's again windy. I've got a collaboration here with our man over there, Mike, my son from TA Outdoors, and he builds things. He likes to build traditional things. So I've gone with here, look, the minimum tackle. Let me show you why I can't take any more tackle. That's why I can't take any more tackle. And what was great fun was these things. There. I've got them all around my neck and I made a very, very bad mistake of opening the window at 60 mile an hour and it was like snow all around me. So I'm going to load up the gear. My man assures me we've got a very nice picturesque walk down here. I've never seen this place, never fished it. We're going to be having two species we're going to be looking for. We're looking for wrasse and at high water we might get a chance of a mackerel. Light tackle, spinning rods, small lures, it's all small, small, small all the way, except for the fish. I feel like I'm going to be stumbling across a nice uh, tench lake or... It's like an old ravine there, look. Yeah, there is, yeah. A gorge, I'm going to call that. That's a sign you want, look, see? They, they do, no, they're not allowed to shoot people, you see, it says that. No people allowed. This is secret that's, headland. The yeah, that's more of that thatch. Don't show Mike, he'll want me to put it in the back of my car. Snaggy. Very snaggy. Yeah, only on the right hand rock. Access on the right, maybe. What do you think? Quieter, but shallow. <sighs> very shallow, isn't it? The, Crikey, the other very. side, you can get further out against this rock. Well, we can we can rig a rod together and throw it out over in that corner over there. Off the end. You're not going to get cut off on the tide. You can see where the barnacles are growing. It is shallow, though. Yeah, it? really shallow. Do you want to try the other side? No, try this one first, I'd say. The other side goes way further around the rock. You can get way further around this thing. The other side, if you wanted to. Pretty big old cliffs up there, look, panning down. He's all keen to get round there. I figure there's only one spot, might throw one rod out there. The rest is just what we call graunchy ground years ago for bass. High water, you're going to lose some gear in there. But we'll give it a go. I think it's worth a throw. Looks like there might be where Mike's going, a huge cave there as well. And just for those people of senior years like myself, this is a sort of place where it's best not to have two hands with stuff in like I have. It'd be nice to have one hand clear in case you trip or fall. This way, two dangerous things happen. Three, one, I fall and break my fishing rod. Not good. Two, I fall and break my camera. Not good. Three, I fall and break my neck. Even worse. Big cave up in there. I've got to watch where I'm going now, people here. So I have not, I've got, I'm wearing trainers and I've just noticed there is no ankle support on them. So it'd be much better if I had my uh, proper walking boots. The tide should be oh, pretty impressive up there. All the compressed layers. Right. Well you can see the angle it's come up at. It's been it's pushed up. You, you, it, you yeah. think it's been pushed up from the bottom of the earth that way but it's push, been pushed up sideways I guess. Seen all the tiny layers, the lines. There's probably hundreds of years, thousands of years in between each line. And it's been primitive people here. Look in the corner under the cave. Hoodoos. Hoodoos built up there. It's been uh, people living here 
since the last high water. Being the kids' holidays, are we going to top of that rock? Tackle up here somewhere. One rod, I'm going to go for this, right? Platform here. Base camps here. We're only giving it a few casts. Tide's coming in. Anybody does this, make sure you wash the water from here to here coming in. So you don't get cut off. Another big cave over there. Right, what I've got is a five piece travel rod. I can't even see what it says. Three to ten pounds. That's a and it's six feet five long, so it's in five pieces. Namura one, nice little one. We like using these travel rods. Homemade, I'm gonna call it a drop shot lead there. So that's this for the lead. It's a little snood. I've tied the loop off there, and I've got a size four carp hook on there. I'm gonna go small. I can go small if there's some real tiny fish here. I've got a section of ragworm, just a half a ragworm. I'm gonna thread him around up and over the eye. You want to get all the worm on if you can, because rat, rats really are notorious for nipping that last piece off. I'm going to check my drag. Just waiting for this rain to ease a bit. You can see it's backing up in there now. What are you going for? A lure? Aren't you a lure? Dexter wedge. That's a Dexter wedge, small one. Yeah. We could both be on a one-way ticket here because yeah, it looks are. pretty snaggy. I think we're definitely going pretty straight. Pretty snaggy. I see one little hole for me, but I reckon I'll go that's... over the top. It's not raining, I've got a rain jacket, so I'll go over the top. Yeah, we'll see where we get out on that rocks. Might be a bit slippery on that green stuff there. Tide's on the way in. It's coming in now, should be flooding. About 2.30 was low water, but that was, I think, Swanage Show. It's different down here. You can see here, these are the limpets. You can knock these off for bait. They're quite good for wrasse, but you've got to knock them straight away because they just tighten up. So you don't get them off the first time. And this weed is deadly when you're walking on that so we're just going to go up slowly. When I say we, it's emphasising me. I'm going to really pick my way around here. I used to do quite a bit of rock fishing years ago, but it was when I was younger. There we go. And you've got more bait charges here. Not a great big bait, but there's something. There's not a bad little hole down there, actually. You can see the kelp there. Nightmare. Why am I casting to it, Graham? Go down to it, man. Just balance, balance. Can you guys feel a booty coming? Lots of little bits in the water here. It normally just takes a short time for a fish to come in on, on worms. There's a huge amount of, I'm going to call them particulates in the water, pieces of weed broken up there. I don't fancy over there's a little bit darker. But there is no depth. So one snag up and I'm done. Always check the drag. Fishing like this, your very target species is going to be wrasse. And around there you can see it's really, really windy. I thought it might be deep off of there, but perhaps not. Oh, there's a bite. I just had a tap. I just had a tap, small fish. And the other sensible thing is, as you see, the bait's gone. Don't bring any bait with you, Graham. Make sure you have to go all the way back to Mike there to get some more worms. How stupid. What a stupid child. I've already got two out of ten for maths at school. Mind you, I had a bite. That is so impressive up there. Really cool. I think there's like iron going that colour, that orange colour going through there. Now, bait it up again, I'm going to flick it over the back. It was a small fish bite. It's just hit the bottom, I'm just going to hold that one. Oh, mm -hmm. no, you can get up here, it's way deeper hole. It's a deeper hole, I'll try this one. Yeah, I'll try it, we're going to lose gear. The other thing people, I've gone all the way back to base camp to get spare worms in my pocket. I know I'm going to lose gear here. And what I've done is leave the weights and the spare hooks back there, so I should be taking the weights and the spare hooks with me. Quite fun travelling night like this. Not the best conditions we've got. Mike is way up there with the lure. 
And keep it shallow first, Mike, because it'll go in the weed otherwise. I've just seen a fish go through the weed down here, guys. That was bizarre. I actually saw the fish. I just saw, I haven't got polarising glasses, and I saw the fish go here. It was a wrasse and went right under that rock. Or did he go in amongst the kelp? So I'm literally lowering my bait down the side of this rock. I've got to put it in even tighter. Is he going to be there? I think he's on it. That was strange. It wasn't a big fish, half a pound or so. It's like sort of rock pool fish. But he, he came in this way, just went around the edge of the rocks and disappeared, what I think, under that rock there. I do like to feel the lead just bump. I just raise the rod top just a little bit like that. Bump. I like to feel it, then I know it's in the clear. I can see it's in the clear, obviously, here. There's another fish. Is that fish down there? You get what they call fish eye. I'm to get over a bit farther. I don't want to get in the weed too much. I'm on, I'm on. Oh, Captain, Captain, Captain Rass is on. Yeah. Bait's always away first. And then the tide fills. That was a little wrasse, that's a ballon wrasse. Small fish. The one I saw down there was bigger in the rocks. Just a small fish. Well, what I've done is there's kelp, 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 and I can just see a lighter patch there. And I figure that where there's no brown is clear. Even better, he was hooked under the chin. There he goes back. I'm going to slide that worm back down there and lob it out there again. Quite handy when you've never fished somewhere before. A little deeper hole there, that's all it is. Come on again, again bites again. Small fish. I think he's had the worm on. Years ago we used to fish wrasse in Ireland a lot. We could get really big fish and numbers of them, I say big three pounders. And I fished with a guy called Kevin Linane. And he worked for the fisheries board there. And that is good night Vienna. Yeah, I used to fish with Kevin and he used to bump it once or twice, but you run the risk of bumping it into the snag as well. And that's why we generally use expendable weights. I'll show you in a second. That one's gone. Could even go lighter. What you can also do here to keep your lead off the bottom when you're, when you're fishing close like this in an area, here even, even here, now that you can put a small float on and let it wash around because then the, the float is suspending your bait off the top of the weed and fish will come up and take it down. I might even have a go at that. So when you fish really grouchy, snaggy ground like this, use expendable weights. In this case, it's got a wrap of lead there and you can use anything. You can use old bolt, bolts, you can use stones off the beach if you've got small enough stones, you can use stones there. Let's give it a go, see if we can get a take off anything. He's on there, I'm getting bites. Small fish. I maybe need a smaller hook, I don't know. Right, it's poised up there as well. The water is coming in pretty quick. None of fish on, small wrasse. And that, look, just a piece of scrap weight there. Look, the only tiny fish, it's a bit of fun, but look at the rod I'm using. It's all about enjoyment. When you get loads of small ones like this, there's no real reason why you can't get a big one. And the higher the water comes up, the deeper water you fish, I feel, oh, a bit close to the weed. I feel there's more chance of a bigger one. I have got some crabs I might use if I find an area of deeper water. This one's a better one. This one's a bit bigger. This one's a bit bigger. Not monstrous, but it is a bigger fish. A little bit bigger. Just as the words came out of my mouth saying you could get slightly bigger ones, there we are, a slightly bigger one. one. Yeah, third one, mate. Oh man, it's every throw a coconut at the moment. All the same size. 
all bell and rass, all the same size. And they get some nice markings on them. Depending whether they're living over a rock or reef. There he goes. Right, what you can do, <clears throat> I'll just do this here. I have to point it up here because I can see the line. I tie a knot in it, the end of the line like that. Hopefully you guys see this. Tie a loop or a slip knot like this. And I get something like an old sawn off boat which came off my boat trailer when I was putting some new suspension units on it. And if you think I'm going to waste this lovely piece of metal, you are sadly mistaken. That is my next expendable weight. Same principle, loop here, one single hook, don't die to two or three hooks in kelp, it's, it's a one way ticket, you're gonna lose it every time. Just a loop like that, and then I tie the hook on the end. It feels like a better fish if I can get him up, boys. Way better. That's better. When I say way better. Oh, look at the other rats following him around. There's another one in the water following him about then. Yeah, that's, that's a better one, yeah. That's more like it, that's what we need. So I have actually got some crab there. But they need to be a big rash to eat these crabs, that's a smooth hound really. Well, a couple of points here, I might as well tell you. I've got here, this is an old frozen rag when I was beach fishing with Mike. Ragworm don't normally freeze, but there's an outside chance if you can find no bait at all, you've at least got something. And here, I've got small frozen crabs. They just freeze them. They're hard backs, you can hear them. But that size, with a bigger hook for a big wrasse, say three pound, four pound, five pound, is absolutely the size. The small ones will hit it, but I probably won't hook them up. Also, we've gone through three. I've used a lead weight, a scrap lead weight. I've used an old sawn off bolt from my trailer. Here's the next weight. We'll see if we can't get a wrasse on an old piece of stone off of there. Try and get an oblong shaped one like that so you can tie it around the middle. So when you do lose gear, you lose absolutely the minimum. Basically all I'm losing is the hook. Let me get washed off this rock soon. I'm gonna put this frozen worm on and see if we can't get a bite on that as well. I'm sure we, uh, we will. We'll give it a go and then we'll try the crab. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. Gonna get cut off nearly. You can see how far that's come up and how quickly. I don't want to lose my hot spot over there. The stone will sink much slower and very often you don't get snagged with it quite so quickly. Fish on it, fish on it boys. I'm getting bites. Bites on the frozen rag and the stone. Ah, oh, I missed him. So it just goes to show you, frozen ragworm will work. Wow, they're all hammering it now. <coughs> missed him. Still a little piece of worm left. I'm going to try it again. The same hole of weed. There's just a hole there. It's just a gap. That's all there is. I think they're going to have my bait. I think the bait's gone. No, it's still banging away at it. I think I'm missing them. Okay, if they're biting that hard, and I'm about to get wet, let's try and see if we get a hit on these crabs. You can see they've stripped that, that soft frozen worm straight off the hook. And these are just go through the edge of the carapace. You can use a piece of leg anything and just work it through this could could get a bigger fish probably have to wait longer between bites you might have cast too far there obviously the small ones like the worm and I'm holding the line across my finger here so I can, I can see the rod top go, but I can also feel the tug here as well. If I don't get anything on this crab, in a few minutes I'll be going back to the worm. So it is a big fish bait. This is what you call living dangerously, folks. I'm still waiting for a bite on the crabs. <laughs> it's coming within a few inches of my shoes, so time to retreat, I think. 
one good swell coming around there and I'm going to have wet feet. And you notice how the stone, I haven't got snagged up quite so much. And look, that's what they've done to my crab. Absolutely shelled it. Back to the worms, I feel, guys. So I've been pushed off my rock mark there. I'm going to have to cast a bit farther. I, would, I, can, I can get the accuracy and drop it down in that hole there. Fish on it. Missed him. Got him. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Keep him coming, keep him coming, keep him coming. And there you go. Small rats, and those were what were shelling the crabs. If I can find a hole, I think I'm going to chuck this crab out. Now there he is, a perfect big rasp bait and a perfect weight, three. What have we got? What have we got? What does it look like? Wow, a lot of weed. I think out there is a bit clearer. No, no, I'll get him from up here. I've got a crab if I lose. Am I over you there? It's about the only clear patch I can see. We're well, in the bottom. That's a drop. Right. Probably gone by the look of it. Oh, you got it. I was lucky I got weed then. We'll go around the other side to try, but we might as well, huh? might as well just try here. The other side? Yeah, we could try it. Well, I'm just losing gear here. You can see the brown of the water. And if I cast out there, the wind's killing my cast. It's coming around this big buttress of rock and uh, shortening my cast with this light tackle like this. I thought there was one hole down there, but I can't find it, I must admit. A bit of an edge over there, but the tide's coming in, so whether we can fish off that platform with long cast might be worth a shot. Failing that, I think it's round to the other side. It's tempted just to climb down this ridge and have one more cast in there. But this is, this is cool, which Mike spotted. We'll show it to you on the way down. Hopefully slowly on the way down. If you guys can see that shape there. That's a fossil. Huge great big shellfish. I think they call it an ammonite. So that is embedded in the rock there. Sediment down below and then pushed up. So that's a massive one. That, is, that really is one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. Hopefully you guys can see it. Not see me going down and becoming an ammonite. Take care. That's it. Well people, we've moved right round the other side. We're in the face of the wind here and it's blowing up. We've just seen a chart about over those white cliffs. He's had to go in, look a bit lumpy. And with light rods, we're just not getting out past the weed. Tide's coming in. Mike's still over there spinning on the end. I mean, there's always a chance. It's not over till it's over, but looking at it, it does not look the sort of mark I would expect to get decent sized rats on. Whether it's worth going over the beach, over that side and throwing some worms out and just sitting there, I don't know because that looks quite clear over there. But here, the weed is in close, I feel more lost gear. Well, I've got a bite guys, just down behind that boulder there and a totally different coloured one. About the same size. I'll try it out there, nothing, and just in behind that big rock there, I've got this really nice coloured green one. Look at the colours in that. That is totally different to around the other side that we caught. But the wind is a whistling now, so I consider we'll give it 10 minutes or so. Get this guy back. And we'll probably go. I can see over there the rain comes in. If all these rocks get wet, then we're going to have trouble. So, pull that worm down a bit. That's the only hole I can see 
it's clear of weeds about there. The wind is howling. They're on it again, they're on it again. I'm getting bites. Yeah, I've got one. Oh, Mike's got one, look. What well, you got, Ras? Oh, good man. Good man, yeah. Bait or lure? Lure. Rowdy how? I've had one with green. Is that one green? That's good. Mike's got one as well. On a lure, no less. Maybe I should be dropping a crab down there. Yeah, he's got a nice one. So the fish are here, as are, yes right, the snags. Oh, put it all back. Enjoy fishing with Mike, that was a good bit of fun, bit of father and son time, so rare in these days. I enjoyed it and it got me going, I wanted to go again, but instead of climbing all over those fantastic looking places with crevasses and gorges and drop offs and death at every step for me, <laughs> my poor old feet can't take all that anymore. It was such a pleasure to go fishing on a south coast pier. Park the car, down the steps, off you go with the bait. Walk along a flat pier. I mean, I must be getting old, man. I, I really enjoyed it. Well, people, I was fishing literally over by those cliffs with Mike shallow water I thought where can I go try and catch some more fish I've come down onto what they call Weymouth Pier or Weymouth Old Stone Pier they call it the Old Stone Pier and the reason for this is that look it's low water the conditions are against me it's very very windy compared with what they gave but there's always a chance of winkling some fish out here because you're immediately casting into deeper water I'm going to use an LRF rod which is very very fine tips if I can catch some small mini species probably get some small rats I hope Fingers crossed, something bigger shows up, but I don't know. As you can see, plenty of anglers fishing down the end of the pier. I'm looking for, we can see the weed down there, and the brown, you won't be able to see, it's actually a fish in there, it looks like a mullet, there's a mullet going along there, slightly greeny colour. I'm looking for holes like that, a bit deeper, so hopefully I don't lose any uh, gear down there. What I've got to watch out for is, this wind's blowing between, I'm going to call this Portland Bill, and the ches Chesil sort of mainland, if you like, bowling along here it's going to push a belly my line if I do float fish so I think I might start with a ledger rod but I've literally just seen off uh, a mullet a single mullet down there and a sort of orangey coloured fish darting around now I've only been here a few minutes just staring and looking I'm going to put my polar rods on but I keep seeing a sort of orangey colour fish there. Now there could be something under the weed and it's just a me weed moving apart showing the orange underneath. I don't really know to be honest and I'm wondering if there's some wonderful weird weird little creatures here and previously I was fishing way way over there with Mike so we're going to see if it's a, a little bit different over this side but it is indeed whistling. I've got base camp here I've got a spoon for throwing bait out because if I throw it out by hand get my hands mucky and the people on the pier get blasted in my chum. We're going to have to use in the head camp here because it's really really windy. Rod and reel. I cannot see what this reel is it's an R2000, so it's a 2000 size reel. It's a little madfish rockstar, I think it's called. Rockstar, seven and a half foot LRF rod, it says three to 12 grams. That means absolutely nothing to Graham because I use whatever comes out the box. Here's my box of weights. Just so you know, I'm gonna lose gear here. Everybody loses gear. Nuts, bolts, washers, anything. 
the standard pattern Oster about 15 inches off there and here the bait I'm using is this to start with this is just frozen ragworm which is generally pretty rubbish bait I've frozen it in one big clump it's still chilled I have got some fresh here and I've got some weird Chinese or Japanese ground bait here which might work now I've used this freshwater fish and it's been really good in fact the best thing I do see if I can scoop this out with my lucky spoon which is just basically a ladle which I put into a piece of overflow pipe there to make it long so the longer it is the longer it goes down here and the longer it gives me a bit of flicking like this in the wind I can get it flicked out bang that stuff is really good that should bring something round so I'm sort of organized now generally mix up bait here ground bait with fish oil in it and call it shervy that's what they did from the Channel Islands and they use these long spoons there to throw it out and this is like a I'll show it to you it's just sort of mashed up well listen you tell me what it says people you tell me what it says but it has been very very good just scatter it down there and see what comes around just going to flick out and drop down I will put my polarizing glasses on in a minute because I feel some fish will be coming out I'm going to aim over there draw it back into what I consider to be a bit of a safe hole there and then to check the drag I'm only on about five pound line here and a tiny tiny quiver tip here now I'm going to put the camera out there so you can see look just how delicate this tip is look watch unbelievably delicate there now you can break these pretty easily but they do give good bite registration so we just leave that down and see if we get any taps or bites on it when it draws down slowly it's generally weed a little tip you might get if you're using little small rods and a light telescopic landing net which I've got here you might want to just put something like a rubber band and I just put it around the ring like this and that holds them all together in one big clump you know and across the butt, butt section there and then all I do to save them so I don't lose them I put them on the last rod there just like that I think there's a bite on that then where's Smithy should be watching that what is windy make sure the rod doesn't get blown over this is a telescopic one you see freshwater telescopic one just in case it probably won't even reach in fact I know it won't reach over there at low tide so it's going to be like small fish here nibbling away just talking to Joe, there's the bite, can you see the bite guys? Look, 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 look. now, have I got a fish on? It's this first cast wonder, it, and this is on frozen, oh nice wrasse, nice wrasse people. Here he comes, here he comes, look at that rod bend, I mean that is a bend in the rod, here comes a wrasse, oh let's get that drag done up a bit. It's a balanced wrasse of which I'm sure there are many down there, but at the end of the day, you know, it's nice about it is the fact I caught a nice little wrasse, hit me in the face with it and I've caught it on frozen worm that I had fishing over there a week or so ago with Mike dropping back so that just goes to show you normally people would say ragworm is no good when it's frozen but I'm I'm going to argue that case and say pieces of frozen ragworm like this look, that is one big clump I can just break it off I can actually feel the ice in it I can also snip this up and throw it in with chum and probably will do the hook is probably, I suppose it's about size 10. It's not a freshwater, it's a Florida hook, which we use bait fishing for a fish called pinfish, for tarpon, barracuda, whatever, and it's long shank. So if you hook the fish, you can get hold of the shank of the hook. So I'm, still going, going, I'm going to keep baiting that hole over there. Not only did I get a fish out of it, and letting it sink with that nut on there, not only did I get a fish, I also got my gear back. So, oh, he's straight on it. I fear this is going to be a one rod deal, people. Look how, that you, how are you going to see the bites on this? I'll put it against the dark of the sky. There's the bites. That's how sensitive this rod is, look. It's a very low retrieve rate with this. In fact, thinking of it now, did I even need to buy all those worms? 
down it goes. Now it's low tide at the moment, so it's not great. I'm still catching fish, providing you can find some of this not in the cut. There is something red down there, I don't know what it is. Now I can't take on my other rod up. You fishermen know what it's like. And I've also keep my finger across the line here. Because I can see the tip go with this light rod, but I can also feel it with my fingers. Oh, that was a bite. That's a good bite. What the heck is this? Is this a fish or is it a piece of weed? A piece of weed. But look at the hook. Stripped. And that's on the frozen bait. Small boat going out there. Good luck to it because it looks pretty windy. The problem I'm getting is there's a huge belly of line there. I've got to tighten it up without letting that wind drag my little light weight into the weed. I could fish with a heavier weight but I feel I'll probably get snagged more. I feel the weed there now. I'm going to pull it back and go to back. I'm dropping it back into that what I consider to be a decent hole. One of the guys said it's going to tip down with rain tonight. There's the bite, people. I'm going to sit. I'm going to sit here. Sit here and let Smith watch it. it look, 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 look. If I hold it very, very still, there's the bite. Now I've left a bit of tail hanging up past the bend of the hook. So they're probably tugging away at that and I've got to wait for the whole of the rod to pull down when they've got the whole of the bait. They're just chewing away at it at the moment. They're not big fish, all fun fish. I think he's going to be on in a minute. Let's move it a bit closer. Missed him, so I just drop it back down. back on I must have a bit of bait left I've also got a rod I'm going to put a big crab on with a bigger hook and see what's down there maybe throw it a little bit farther my boys the old frozen worm is going really well I've always known it did work but listen you can't you can't blast it out can you, you can't cast it out miles but you can at least fish with it I've got a tiny tiny hook on now can I see what other mini species are down there this is like a size 14 freshwater hook and a tiny piece of bait on there. This wind, just like the last few sessions, I can't tell you the wind has been blowing and blowing. So all I'm doing is breaking pieces of worm off of that frozen block in there and using that. So for pier fishermen, if you do get ragworm left over, we all do, don't, uh, don't waste it. Freeze it down, and mine, I have frozen them individually. A bit fiddly to get on the hook. It doesn't matter what they eat, they eat. It's better catch a fish on it than nothing at all. I just fear the rain is coming in earlier. Look at this lot, wow. It's like one of those uh, thunderstorm lines. I'm guessing the weather front. Just let that bait touch the bottom. And I'll tell you when the fish are on it. Now, first tap. They gave two weather fronts coming through and I wonder if that weird, up there, you see the line that could be the, f the actual weather front itself coming through with the cloud. And there's a second one behind it. Hopefully the second one's not bringing all the rain in. Well, I'm on about my 15th wrasse now on a tiny sized freshwater so what is it? It's about a 14, I think, this hook. And a, a minuscule piece of bait. I'm getting small wrasse like this. Look, only small ones. You see the size of the hook there? It's tiny. So I'm wondering about... Oh, it's kicking me in the face all the time. Why do they do that? Pretty little chat. Got lovely colours. Tide's picking up, but the wind is just blowing it really, really hard. Nothing on the crab bait. I may well move down there with these kids clear off and uh, fish in that bay over there. In fact, I might even cast a worm down to see what's down there. All right, the rasa, literally where that reef finishes, and it goes deeper there, it's a deeper hole. I think I might move up here. I might get another bait out on a crab and have more of a chance. But there's no shortage of these, uh, these small rasa here. All good fun fish. Oh my God, look at the white bait down there. There's a huge, huge, if I hold it, 
There's loads and loads of white bait flashing there, people. They're probably being pushed in by mackerel. Just going to cast. I can see them flashing down there. I doubt you'll see them. So I'm just jigging the bait in at the moment. Loads and loads of white bait down there, just flashing. If I hold dead still, you might might be able to see them flashy. Massive shoal of them. They're going down the inside here now. Well, the LRF rod's coming to its own, folks. And there you can see little baby Pollock. He scoffed the hook, but it comes out easy. Only a small fish, second species. Well. The wind is just whistling, it's really, really annoying. It makes it difficult for filming, almost impossible to fish very, very light tackle and you miss a lot of bites as well. It's clouding over and it's chilly. I'm actually, I can't, I can't say, in fact, I think I'm getting less bites on the fresh ragworm than I am on that frozen ragworm, which is a bit strange. Could be the area, of course, but there's a lot of people on the pier, so I can't sort of move around and put my chum in yet. It's still early, I've got a couple of hours, three hours left. I really don't want to take it home with me, but I want to make sure I put it in the right spot. And that's what I'm doing. But here's the crab on the white rod. Nothing on that crab at all. It's in exactly the same spot I've been catching on the ragworm. I'm trying down, you see the inside of the pier, which is the uh, channel estuary here. Where it comes down from the river up here. And it appears tight in close to the pilings there. There's rass as well. So, no shortage of wrasse here, all small at the moment. Well, I've got jackets on now, people. I have got another species. Tiny, tiny. I'm getting smaller. I'm going the wrong way, people, look. Tiny little pouting. Small fish, small hook, and it just, you can catch something, look, on tiny pieces of ragworm. That's on about a size 14 hook. Only a small fish, but at least I'm still catching. Excellent live bait if I wanted to. That's one of the uh, charter boats, wave of charter boats coming in from a day offshore. I'd imagine with this wind it's been pretty lumpy out there. Not too disappointed I wasn't out, out on a small boat today. I'm getting bites straight down between these stanchions here which is always a good place. People and anglers always think casting out in the middle, and we all like casting out in the middle, because it's just like casting, I suppose, but I like to drop things straight down sometimes. And I'll tell you where it's very good, in places like Florida, Piers, you get, I'm getting bites all the time. Because it's structure at the end of the day, out in there, out in the middle there's no structure, right down here there's structure. These are probably more of those small pouting. So we'll find out, we're gonna find out, we're gonna find out. Oh, he dropped off, trust me. It was a, a, a nice little fish. Now I'm going down between the notch, if you can see that, trying to drop the bait down in between the notch. The wind is a bit of a pain, but there is no shortage of tiny fish down there. There's got to be mackerel and bass not far away, you would think. Bigger pollock, because this is what they eat. The wind is absolute. Let's turn this way a bit. It must be blowing 20 knots. Two days in a row now. Horrible wind. You want to make sure you always, like anything, you always want to feel the bottom or the seabed there. You want to be able to. Hello, 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 hello. Say no more. Say no more, folks. It is indeed pouting central down there. There we go. Very, very good little live bait. I might even send one out on a float actually. Let that tide get up and the pier empty out a little bit. Still got my worm. Yeah, there's loads down there, people. There is loads down there. Oh, I wait, no, different species. Is this a small pollock or a whiting? Small pollock. That's 25 knots now. Look at this. Absolutely howling. 
Well, I'll come over here to get out of the wind, guys. Something different here. Only small, but it shows you all the species you can get down here. This one, it is a spiky little black bream. So having a good session. It's horrible weather up there. You know, up there, you can see him against the sky there. It's really howling down the river. So tiny bits of ragworm, small size, 12 hooks, 14 hooks. A weight is barely big enough for a tiny fraction of a worm. And I'm ke catching these bream now. Bream, pouting, pollock and wrasse. And it's amazing, let's check him back. It's amazing how different areas of the pier have different fish. Look up this end, more sand, no wrasse. Down there's weed, there's wrasse. I'm gonna put a bait on the bottom, one of those uh, pouting. I'll fish it off the bottom, I think, like this and see if we can't fish a live pouch. I've tried it on the float, hooking up a live one, dropping it out on my bigger rod and nothing, it's just blowing so hard it's coming down the side of the pier, pushing the float out of position. I will try ledgering it though, fingers crossed I can keep it out there. Well, it's getting to the end guys and let's get uh, this one out. There's quite a lot of people along the pier now. This one's a another small black bream there. Lots of spikes on him there. And I've just seen one, I think two mackerel caught. So I'm going to stay spinning in a minute, but I will drop the baits down in case there's something else down there. The pier's pretty well full now, all round. Just keep top, topping this one little piece of bait up, just like this, threading it round. Pop it over the eye. straight pattern oster a nut on the bottom and a nut casting out we nice to get a nice big black bream about a pound and a half I fear not though they tell me the pier's been fishing really poorly but listen I've had about 60 fish today but they're all been small I don't mind a fish is a fish is a fish as we say quite like a wide gape a wide gape hook if I was bait fishing I've gone to a carp hook now and I use half a worm, just break it off, put the other half on that rod. And then what I do is, I've got my hand wipe bag, any sections of worm or bait, I just put in there, and I've got some, fold it all up, and leave it right where I want it. But check this one out. There is indeed a fish on it coming number 64 or whatever. Anybody want some fun? Get down here, but use expendable weights like this. And you can have fun with these all day long. Probably, probably all night long as well. Out down there, it's very, very clear. Tide's coming up well now. I'm amazed there's not bigger wrasse around here, but I suppose because it's fished by the public a lot, it gets har harvested and hammered. I am kind of surprised there's not a big wrasse down there. Fish straight on it. Bites straight away. This one I think's in the weed. I might have a go with a spinning rod. The spinner I've used is this one. A little Dexter Wedge mini one. You can't feather, cast feathers off here. Seen the sign, no feathers. I've seen people with feathers. So I'm just using a spinner. Right out. Well, thanks for watching that little show. I know they weren't big fish, but it's a bit of fun. It's light. Well, when I say light tackle, guys, it's light, small rods, heavier line, let's say 10 pound up line. I don't want to go stupidly light up four pound line. It's a one way ticket, and I hate erosion tackle. Anyway, try it yourself. If you're out this summer or in the autumn, good time to go, especially the autumn. Light tackle fishing, you don't have to use, like a lot of people do, jigs and baits and rubber worms. You don't have to do that. I find you'll catch more on tiny pieces of worm and small hooks and light leads. Kids especially, youngsters, novices, give it a go. Catch some fish first and then move on to the big stuff. 
hit the subscribe button on both channels, TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. We'll see you next time and hopefully bigger fish. Thank you.